Welcome to the Growing Dentist by Dr. Ali. In this video we will discuss the spread of oral infections. Cellulitis is a diffuse infection of connective tissue with severe inflammation of dermal and subcutaneous layers of the skin. It can be caused by normal skin flora or by exogenous bacteria and often occurs where the skin has previously been broken. Skin of the face or lower legs are most commonly affected by this infection. It is caused by a bacteria entering the skin. Streptococcus and Staphylococcus are the most common of these bacteria. A minor injury to the skin, such as a cut, may lead to such infection. It occurs in a person with diabetes, a weakened immune system, or patients on immunosuppressive drugs. Periapical infection extending into the soft tissue may reach up to palate, causing swelling of an orbit and nose. Clinical features of cellulitis include painful swelling of involved soft tissue, which is firm and brawny. Inflammation of the skin is seen, having a purplish color. In maxilla, cortical plate is perforated along with breaking of buccinator muscle, causing swelling of the upper face. Trismus and regional lymphadenitis occur as well. Infections become localized, and abscess is formed. Histopathology shows exudate of lymphocytes, leukocytes with serous fluid causing separation of muscles and the connective tissue. It is treated by administration of antibiotics or surgery. Ludwig's angina. It is a serious, potentially life-threatening cellulitis. Infection occurs in tissues of floor of the mouth, usually occurring in adults associated with dental infections. This begins in submaxillary space and secondarily involving the sublingual and submental spaces. Not considered as a true infection till all the submandibular spaces get involved. Ludwig's angina is caused by a gunshot wound, penetrating stab injury, or patient having periapical and periodontal infection. Second and third molars are most commonly infected. It clinically represents as a swelling in floor of the mouth causing elevation of the tongue, this is a diffuse swelling, and it's firm and painful. Patient has difficulty in eating, swallowing and breathing. Fever and respiratory distress may also occur. Swelling involves the neck, and spreads to parapharyngeal spaces. It is treated by antibiotics, or tracheostomy. Cavernous venous thrombosis, is usually a late complication of an infection of the central face, or paranasal sinuses. It is usually caused by bacteremia, trauma, and infections of the ear or maxillary teeth. This is an important disease with high rates of morbidity. Cavernous sinus is at the base of the skull. Staphylococcus aureus accounts for approximately 70% of all infections, although streptococcus pneumoniae, gram-negative bacilli, and anaerobes can also be seen. All ages are affected, with a mean of 22 years. No specific early signs and symptoms are seen. Patients generally have sinusitis or a mid-face infection. Headache is a common sign. As the infection tracts posteriorly, patients complains of orbital pain and fullness accompanied by periorbital edema with visual disturbances. Without effective therapy, signs appear in the contralateral eye by spreading through the communicating veins to the contralateral cavernous sinus. Eye swelling begins as a unilateral process and spreads to the other eye within 24 to 48 hours via the intercavernous sinuses. This is pathognomonic for cavernous sinus thrombosis. Confusion, drowsiness, coma, periorbital edema, manifestations of increased retrobulbar pressure, and meningeal signs, including mucal rigidity, are its clinical features. This condition is treated with the antibiotic therapy. Infections of the teeth have plagued humans constantly, despite a question for a better oral hygiene. It arises from pulpitis and associated necrotic dental pulp that initially begins on the tooth surface as dental caries. These are localized or they quickly spread through various facial planes. Odontogenic infections may be primary or secondary to periodontal, pericoronal, traumatic, or post-surgical infections. Typical odontogenic infection originates from caries. In the pulp, infection may develop a track through the root apex and burrow through the medulla cavity of the mandible or maxilla. 
the infection then may perforate the cortical plates and drain into the superficial tissues of the oral cavity or track into the deeper facial planes. If the infection does not drain, it will remain localized and develop into a periapical or a periodontal abscess. Patients with superficial infections may complain of localized pain, edema, and sensitivity to temperature and air, whereas patients with deep infections or abscesses that spread along the facial planes may complain of fever and difficulty swallowing, breathing, and opening the mouth. Space involved with their sources. For the buccal space, source of infection is maxillary premolars, or molars, whereas in the mandible, it's molars only. This causes infraorbital, zygomatic and buccal infection. Mandibular anteriors cause infection in the submental space. For submandibular space, mandibular posterior teeth causes infection and swelling in the mandibular area. Lateral cervical region consists, spread of mandibular infected teeth, into the parapharyngeal space, and for the canine space, infected maxillary canines causes swelling in the maxilla buccal vestibule. Pathogens travel in the facial planes, from one space, near the infected site to another distant space, by the help of related inflammatory exudate. Spaces when infected, can undergo cellulitis, Ludwig's angina or osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis is an inflammatory process, involving the marrow spaces of bone, this also involves the jaw. It can be acute or chronic. The inflammation extends away from the initial site of infection, involving the medullary spaces. Source of infection is usually bacterial, and mandible is most commonly involved. Types of osteomyelitis are acute, chronic, and gara osteomyelitis. Acute osteomyelitis is caused by an extension of untreated periapical abscess. Minor traumatic incident in the mandible causes a compromised blood supply. Its clinical features include complaints of intense pain and the patient is physically ill. The pain will continue to persist till the infection is not drained out of the soft tissue. If exudate stays in the soft tissue, it will keep on hurting till it breaks out on the skin or mucosa through the formation of a sinus. If it's in the mandible, then the exudate may involve the inferior alveolar canal, causing alteration in the nerve conductivity and leading to the paresthesia of lower lip. In the radiograph, symptoms are not actually seen, since the infection is in the soft tissue. Initially the area is faintly visible because of initial spread in soft tissue. No prominent features can be seen, till the exudate does not erode the bone and causes its resorption. Initially, faintly blotchy and mottled area is present at the site of inflammation. Then, when the bone is completely involved, diffuse radiolucencies appear along with sequestrum. Histopathology shows granulation tissue formation, along with numerous neutrophils, debris and fibrin, with bony trabeculae and spicules intermixed, and osteocytes being necrosed. Its treatment includes surgical intervention, with high dose of antibiotic therapy against targeted microbes. Chronic osteomyelitis has two types, focal chronic sclerosing osteomyelitis and diffuse chronic sclerosing osteomyelitis. It occurs as a response to low-grade inflammatory process with little or no pain. The stimulus is usually so mild that it encourages the osteocytes to form bone, hence resulting in a dense bone formation. The dense bone gives a mottled appearance on the radiograph, hence giving it an opaque look. The new denser bone narrows the marrow spaces. This process is known as osteosclerosis. If it is confined to an area around the root of a tooth, then it is called as a focal chronic sclerosing osteomyelitis, and if these changes are diffuse, then it is called as a diffuse chronic sclerosing osteomyelitis. Histopathology shows us a regular fragment of devitalized bone, surrounded by a dense fibrous tissue, and heavily infiltrated by plasma cells, lymphocytes, and only a few granulocytes. The third type is the gara osteomyelitis. It is also known as chronic osteomyelitis with proliferative periostitis. This results in focal gross thickening of the periosteum with peripheral reactive bone formation. It is stimulated by a mild irritation or an infection. Children and young adults' mandible is affected in it. 
Dental caries and periapical infection are its risk factors. Patient suffers with a pain in tooth and jaw. There is bony hard swelling on the outer surface of jaw. Radiographic features shows multiple thin layers of a new bone in the involved area, which is known as the onion skin appearance. It normalizes after the stimulus is removed. Sometimes, recontouring surgery is required. For any questions or advice, please write down to us. The growing dentist team will try the best to help you out. Thank you for watching this video. For questions or queries, kindly write us in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel for more interesting videos of dentistry.